Thanks. I hope you're all okay with the recording, but there's a lot of people that asked if we could record. And, you know, post your name and where you're from in the chat so folks know where people are coming in from. And um, then we can get started. I'm Jody Evans, and I'm one of the co founders of Code Pink and launched the local peace economy project eight years ago. And I'm Emily Franco. I'm the local peace company coordinator at Code Pink, and I've been with Code Pink since last May, helping to um, build some of the tools that we have shared with you and will continue to share with you to support people on the local peace economy journey. Um, so like Jody said, please continue to put your um, name and where you're calling in from in the chat. And um, we're going to drop in a little bit before we go any any deeper. As Jody said last week, we start with culture, music, poetry, art. Um, so we're going to start with a poem tonight, um, similar to how we did last week. And it's called You Start Dying Slowly um, as a moment to drop in. And some attribute this poem to the Chilean uh, poet Pablo Neruda, and others attribute it to Brazilian poet Martha Medeiros. And I wasn't able to find a clear attribution either way, but I think the message is really important. So let's take a moment to ground. Feel your feet. Feel your seat if you're sitting down. Take a breath. Connect to your belly. Connect to your heart. You start dying slowly. You start dying slowly if you do not travel, if you do not read, if you do not listen to the sounds of life, if you do not appreciate yourself. You start dying slowly when you kill your self-esteem, when you do not let others help you. You start dying slowly if you become a slave of your habits, walking every day on the same paths. If you do not change your routine, if you do not wear different colors, or you do not speak to those you don't know. You start dying slowly if you avoid to feel passion and their turbulent emotions, those which make your eyes glisten and your heart beat fast. You start dying slowly if you do not change your life when you are not satisfied with your job or with your love, if you do not risk what is safe for the uncertain, if you do not go after a dream, if you do not allow yourself at least once in your lifetime to run away from sensible advice. Thank you. So, so I just, you know, again, say welcome and, um, The ways we pivot to are the ways of indigenous cultures around the world. They're the ways that they learn to let peace and harmony and justice serve their communities. They knew we could all fall into crevices and get lost. And there were ways that the community knew the behaviors were just that and not an indictment of the person or even the animal. They were attuned to the health of the planet and the people and all things living. We have so horribly lost our way and are thinking and feeling scrambled by the flood of toxic lies fueled by greed, power, and trauma. The war economy works very hard to divest you from you, from the community, and then use you, your heart, and your mind as tools for its goals. So as we do this pivot, um, just a reminder, it's not a quick fix. It, it's been a long time in the work. So yes, we must continue to expose the war economy. Just asking a few people to mute. Um, cool, thank you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's not a quick fix. Yes, 
we must continue to expose the war economy, disrupt it, block it whenever possible, but we must cultivate a future because even in the work to block it, it's owning us, it's diverting our attention to what is necessary, which is the future. The cultivating a future also makes us more effective in addressing the war economy. As our roots deepen and richen into what lives inside of all of us, and we become a tuning fork for others, it helps them also find their way out and it creates clarity. And we all know in this moment, clarity is very hard to come by. Um, last week, we, we went in depth about what the local peace economy is and, and what we're working on. And that recording is available if any of you missed it. But I want each week to be fresh and different. So we're always learning. So the recordings will be available for people who miss them. Since we were together two weeks ago, we've been watching a battle between the rules-based order dictator Biden and company destroy Gaza and her people and crush international laws. You know, just today, the penalties for standing with South Africa are being leveled against the countries um, that, that stood there, innocent countries. All they did was stand against genocide and the State Department is now declaring them not safe to travel to, which will hurt their economy. So I have never thought that this could happen so fast, but I think there's something to look at here. Right now, there is nothing in the way. The hegemony and the power of the United States, it's 75% of the weapons on the planet and nuclear weapons has it with nothing in the way we threw international law at it and it threw it back in everyone's faces, unfunding UNRWA, going at the countries that were with South Africa, basically saying, you know, we don't care about your international law. We rule, we have the weapons. I mean, we're literally back to the days of Genghis Khan. So that means that we're looking at the moment we live in in history. And we know that part of what it tries to do is overwhelm and depress us. But we come together because it is always the people that create change. And so here we are cultivating a future together. And so remembering it takes time, uh, past, has been laid by Israel for 75 years, the US hegemony for longer, but we've seen that it is people and we can't invest in power. We have to be investing in people. And I know it's hard because- we've Oh, been... you can turn it off. Sorry. We've been, uh, acc... <laughs> we've been taught to get caught up in this other world, but we're gonna create another one. And please, please, please never let how insane, inhuman, diabolical what is happening now crush you or overwhelm you. That's how they win. It's we're creating a community so we have each other to go to, so we have arms to hold, so we remember what the truth is. And I wanna talk about a couple of ways that cultivating a local peace economy also works with engaged activism. Today, we have a victory. The biggest city so far, Chicago, voted, the city council voted to stand for a ceasefire. Now, who made that happen? Local peace economy organizations. Those people working on healthcare, working on housing, working locally on the things that are essential for life. Those are the people that made the difference. And not only that, that last deciding vote, he said, I don't really want to vote this way, but you have forced me to. And we hear that from the members of Congress that we have moved to say divest. It is people power. It is pressure. But where did that power come together? It came in cultivating peace locally. It came in organizing a community. That force Everyone in the, you know, that blocked the entire halls of the whole 
city a hall the city hall of chicago every single one of those people were people who work on the local peace economy they're people who work on what issues matter to the people's needs those are the people that work on life so when i say you know it's it's integrated it's like when you're doing the work but when you need to do the other work you're there together and it was layers and layers and layers of local peace economy projects and it was those people who are local, those people who create power that forced this vote to happen. Now, um, it's a great thing to get engaged in locally. And, um, you know, it could be we can help you. We're not here to talk about that. And it's a great way for local peace economy projects to work together, too. But I, I wanted to share that with you. And then I wanted to talk about what happened in San Francisco and how when you're doing this work, you know, I, I want to say there's like a magic that happens. And that's because when you're serving life, life is serving you. And it's it, kind of the way the pivots happens. If you get deeper into the pivots, you'll all of a sudden see there's something magical that happens. It's like that pivot starts to serve you in a way that you didn't recognize or have available to you before. But another example is San Francisco. So the San Francisco crew have been engaged with the local peace economy since I started. They were there with me day one. Many of them have created like even peace economy center. San Jose got a whole house and they have they teach gardening and uh, cultivated a lot of front front um, front gardens that were feeding communities and many, many ways that they cultivate a local peace economy in the Bay Area. It's it's really the uh, the. I don't know, the pot of gold of local peace economies between Richmond and Oakland and Berkeley and San Francisco. One of the things that they do together and infused by the local peace economy is, you know, partly it's just what is life look, what is joyful, what is pleasure, you know, all the things that make life beautiful. For the last 20 years, they've done teas and picnics and teach-ins and kind of beautiful things happening at Nancy Pelosi's house to ask her to have a meeting and talk to her that they'd like to teach her why war is a bad idea and it kills mothers and children. And, and it's been quite beautiful. And um, a few months ago, uh, right after October 7th, they went over and they did a die-in in front of her car so it couldn't leave. And she got very angry and told them to go back to China. And then the on Sunday, we see her say something even more outrageous that the Activism for Gaza is must be fueled by Putin and that ceasefire is really Putin's message. And so that has just swirled around the world as a way of a window and a, and a spotlight to look back at how crazy all this is, to help people understand the insanity. And that's all arisen out of a local peace economy. So I wanted you to be able to see how activism and local peace economy go together. And those are two just examples from this week. But from the last meeting, we were working on pivots. And so I wanna talk a little bit about the pivots and um, where they came from. As I, as I saw, oh, wow, we're not going to end war till we end the war economy. And my deep look at like, okay, what's the war economy and what does it do and how does it affect us? Um, thank you, John. Yes, we get life from what we give. So I think that's a, we should keep, we'll quote you because that's what the logo piece is going to be work is. When we're giving to life, it goes back. And that's, that is a truth that comes out of this work. So the pivots have been kind of, created over time as we saw the things that the war economy forces us into. A lot of people working on it would share them. So we have what we've developed over the years, but I please, 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 if you find one, if you're in something and you see this is an addiction and something doesn't serve life and it doesn't serve you, and it would be better this way, please feel free to share us. You can always send to Emily or bring it as an offering um, to one of these calls because we're all learning together. Uh, this is, you know, it's a, it's a fabric that we're weaving together. So pivots, 
Uh, we really want to hear this week how the pivots went for you. What um, what did you learn? How did it affect you? How do you feel? And maybe should, um, I, I want to just share just a couple of my favorites from people who've shared with me, just a couple to get you this to kind of uh, fuel the, the conversation. One was um, a few years ago, someone started and they came back to me and they said, oh my God, did you know we lived in a field of generosity? As soon as I started being generous, as soon as I started paying attention and I was giving things away, all of a sudden I realized, oh my God, the world is so generous. Things were coming back to me. I would give and something gave back. So um, that was that was one that I must have heard over and over and over again. And the other one was about sharing joy. And so Emily has pasted in the chat um, the pivots. If some of you are, are new and haven't seen them, there are 20, 23 ways for you to divest mm -hmm. your economy. Uh, I call them addictions because when you're not being nourished, uh, you try to nourish yourself and you nourish you, uh, and the war economy creates these addictions. That's a fake nourishment. Uh, it's not really nourishing you. So you get lost in that kind of hamster wheel instead of the behaviors that do nourish you, that do have you experiencing and being uh, fed by life, fed by life and life feeding back as, as we heard earlier. So I'd like to break you into groups of three and um, for you to share either how your week with the pivots were, or if you weren't here last week, um, take a look at the list and see, you know, what, where you see the ones that speak to you. And um, I guess we'll give you all 10 minutes, three people. This, and, um, and, you know, and also just a chance to get to know each other and um, to get to have a conversation about the pivots. So let's see. I just want to check. We've got one, two, three. Let's see, 24. Oh, perfect. Seven. So we'll break you into groups of seven and that'll give you time. And um, okay, so how did you work with the pivots last week? What did you learn? What was surprising? What was joyful? What was interesting? What, and then for those of you that didn't have the pivots to work with, take a look at the list and say, you know, what are the ones that look like you'd like to work with them next week? So we'll see you back in 10 minutes. Um, I hope you all had a nice time together. And um, so I'm uh, I'm now gonna, um, also I just wanna acknowledge like how many of you are local code pinkers and organized locally and just deepest gratitude for all of that and all that you do. I, and just, I, I, I'm just so grateful to be with all you amazing peacemakers and cares for peace. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Emily to start uh, us learning what happened in your breakouts. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Um, hopefully someone from each breakout room can share um, what something that struck you from your conversation, something you're taking away. Um, who wants to share first? Or I, I'll actually, I'll just go from breakout room to breakout room. Um, the first one was a uh, emoji, and please correct me if I'm saying you even correctly. Um, and if you're not goes. Yes, hi. Uh, this is Edwina um, from Arizona, and um, it seemed it went very quickly. Both. Um, well, myself, um, I should say that this is my first time. So um, I was kind of reviewing the pivots to peace. And then um, Moji and I shared uh, some of his background and I started to share mine. 
But um, interestingly enough, it sounds like Moji is kind of well on the road with um, this kind of approach. Um, I'm still learning some of the language and some of what the concepts are. So um, that's what I learned. Um, and it was enjoyable, um, although short. <laughs> so <laughs> Moji, yeah. So, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Economy and is more deeply steeped in these practices. Uh, you know, when I'm in Iran, I understand that, um, you know, how much some some cultures still exist that are more deeply rooted in the peace economy. And you know, us in the United States, it's like we're like we've been stripped stripped away for so long. But uh, Moji's ahead of a little bit ahead of all of us. And it's well, a journey. Thank it's you a so journey. much. <laughs> <laughs> it's a practice. It's not about perfection, and we're all entering from where we're entering from. Um, uh, great. So the I'll next breakout. Send you the link. I'll, I'll send Group two. Okay. Uh, Pamela, Tom, and whoever is named admin on here. I'm not sure what your name is, but anyone from that group care to share? What struck you, what you learned, what you're leaving with, leaving that conversation with? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll share. Uh, we had a very lively conversation. Alice is the third member, and uh, time went quickly. One thing we came up with was like how familiar the pivots actually are in our prior work, and that this is not brand new but it's something we've been trying to develop for anybody who's trying to make the world a better place. These things speak to us, you know, so it's not a brand new language and it was applied by, by one person in the group is using it in the church group, for example, you know, and, and, and having a little group in that context. So it's very flexible and adaptable, these pivots, because they are universal. Another thing that came up was that, uh, these are all attributes of that uh, refer to inner spiritual development, our growth as human beings. Like if uh, whatever we want to cultivate in the world needs to be cultivated within us. You know, if we have to live with the re real conviction of that we're pivoting from scarcity to abundance. So we have to live with that. Whatever one you want to pick, uh, uh, rushing to wisdom. We have can't be rushing. We have to like be able to, have the wisdom to appreciate the beauty in the world, still, for example, that it's not all heaviness. There's still a lot of beauty. Uh, and you can, any one of the pivots could be unpacked that way. Like how am I personally myself cultivating that pivot in my inner life and then practicing in a community, you know, and that's how we bring it to the world. Not by telling them about the pivots, but by living the pivots. I think that's the point. So Tom, is there a, a pivot that you played with this last week that you had a surprise with or that, um, you know, <laughs> gave you gave you something back? Yeah, absolutely. A number of them. One I'll speak of briefly is the the uh, one about, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, relationality, transactional to relational. And it came about in, in uh, the in Wisconsin, like we're talking about rural politics a lot. We've been reading the Vernon County Dems. I read a book called Dirt Road Revival. And it's all about like, how do we relate to the rural population? Because a lot of our uh, presidential uh, national politics and uh, is just like so focused on the urban centers. And that builds resentment. There's a whole book, The Politics of Resentment in Wisconsin. The, the, that's why Trump uh, did as well as he did here, because he like, got them, you know? So how do you meet these people? And this idea of uh, relationality has to be at the core of our work rather than transactional being like, if I give you this, you'll give me this. If I explain it the right way, you'll believe that what I want you to believe, you know? It's all like this, that, if this, then that has to be set aside and left. The pivot is towards who are you? Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? And, and that relationship between beings rather than looking at them as another vote that you want to get. 
you know? Thank you. That's that's beautiful. And I, I also think it speaks to this moment as we're watching uh, the dehumanization of Palestinians. Um, you know, like, as we say, to look in the mirror of what's happening, it's that same thing you're talking about, Tom. When do we dehumanize in our lives? And that pivot from transactional to relational is a real pivot into not dehumanizing. And we, none of us think we do it, but it is so, it's the scariest one to me. I have to say, coping, we work on it all the time because we all of a sudden find ourselves like wanting results and wanting, I mean, nobody wants to behave the way we do, but our minds are so acclimated to it. And so, you know, it's a, it is the, I find it's the hardest one um, because of the bad habits that we're in. But to be relational, like you say, Tom, is, you know, that is, I think the core practice is to, because it'll catch us every day. It'll, you know, that's the one that I get caught up with every day, uh, especially when I go too fast, a uh, transaction shows up right away. So, so thank you for that. Yes, thank you, Tom. Um, next group is John, Rachel, and Sue Ellen. Uh, John, why don't you go? Because you talked mostly about your book that you had read. I think, John, you need to unmute. Yeah. Sorry. I don't really have much to say except that. <clears throat> that um, I'm really, really concerned, I think, as, as all of us were in, in the group I was in, uh, about um, the matter of um, what to do in November. None of us want to vote for either party, and the, uh, and, and the uh, third party, various third parties aren't viable. So, um, John, so guess what? That is not what we... One of my things about elections is that if you cultivate a local peace economy, you will know how to vote. If you create a community, everyone in the community will know how to vote. And I'm looking for surprises. And I think the more that we build what we are building around Gaza, the more the people fall away, some surprises will happen. And for me, when we look at elections, I call that by being used by the war economy. Because if we think we live in a democracy, we're deluded. Um, so, you know, don't let that pattern that gets hooks us in have any power over you right now. It is a failure. It is not. Please do not anyone here give any of your time to that. Because if you cultivate a local peace economy, if you work together for life, everyone in your community will know what to do on Election Day. But boy, the, the industry that is elections is a $4 trillion industry. It sucks $4 trillion yeah. out and manipulates hearts and minds into either or. Remember one of those pivots is about this either or us them. And it takes us into an us them that unroots us from our heart. It unroots us from our mind. It distorts us. And so... I, I mean, if you want to be liberated for, you know, this is, I call election years hell. If you want to be liberated from hell in 19, in, you know, 2024, cultivate a local peace economy because when everyone else's brains and hearts are getting trashed, yours will be nourished, yours will be stronger, yours will be more beautiful, and everyone will want know what to do election day. And I feel that by cultivating local peace economies, by cultivating locally, by being in communities, something, there will be another choice. And it it it's not for us, you know, it's not for us to create except by creating the soil for it. And I, I see that both in our local peace economy work and in our, you know, our organizing against war. It's building. There's something building. Stay in the build. Stay in building people power. Do not let an ounce of yourself be used by this horrible, horrible thing that is a lie. You cannot look at this moment right now and think that democracy 
I mean, first, I just, there is no democracy. 80% of Democrats say, you know, they want to cease fire and nobody's listening. If you look at the numbers, we you can look at Twitter on Code Pink today. We have the numbers of how many members have said cease fire. It's like, you know, 8% and 26% Senate and Congress with all of all of the country at like 80, you know, 80, no, uh, 70%, 80 with the Democrats. That's not a democracy. So let's not get caught up in that thing. I'm promising you that like by an election day, let's create something totally different by creating the soil for something really surprising to happen. Um, so sorry, John, if there was anything else you wanted to say that was, um, because it sounds like you read a book you liked. I, I think that I think that John's got confused. John Russell oh. was with me, and oh. I don't know who else. But he basically oh, summarized John. our group. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. nobody mentioned the, nobody mentioned the last name. <laughs> well, we, oh, uh, it was a, oh, John Sonnen. Swellen and I were right in the middle of her. Uh, um, uh, uh, discussion of the pivot uh, from urgency to wisdom. And she got cut off because I talked too long from the start. <laughs> um, but uh, you, the, I, under, I am fully behind and I'm sorry you got so impassioned there, Jody, talking to John Russell. But uh, <laughs> I'm fully, I'm fully, uh, 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 alive in your um, interpretation of the change we seek in the world. We are the change. As Gandhi said, it starts with us and it's all about perspective, attitude. It's all about uh, leading through example. You can organize and lead your organized well, the organization can be, is led by example. So when you are when you are living um, life with the perception that there are other alternatives besides this or that, that there's um, a road maybe that goes along uh, um, goodness and badness. Well, that's that's contrary to. I don't know. It's hard for me to think out of the contrarianism, but um, uh, there, there are other ways of viewing reality. And if it were not for capitalism's uh, hegemonizing the world, the planet, we might have native native uh, cultures leading our our uh, especially our uh, our progress, our human development. Um, but so, was, thank, yeah. so John, so thank you, because I think what you nailed there is another one that's kind of hard, um, which is, you know, the us, them, you know, and right, wrong, the, the, you know, instead of seeing the whole picture and, um, the acceptance and the, and the, and that we are all it and it is, you know, so having a relationship with instead of, um, and you know, an adversary, um, being able like to, to open our hearts and minds to be able to see all of it. And at the core, what causes something to happen instead of um, hating it? I like to see it uh, changing from the digital um, to the analog, back to the analog <laughs> way of looking at the world. You know, it's, it's, it's a melding of everything rather than uh, a pixel of everything. So, John, we call that a proxy. And, and I think, thank you for naming that, because I think we don't recognize um, how much we live in relationship to proxies. You know, I say we're, we get the menu, but not the meal. And um, having, relating to the world through zeros and, you know, ones, um, instead of, you know, the I mean, Tom's beautiful, like lettuce there, you know, it's, um, 
instead of uh, having that visceral relationship, there's this thing in the way these these uh, filters um, that are inter that have an effect on us that we're not we're not so aware of when they're happening. But I I, I like your um, analog, analog uh, digital analog. We should add that one, Emily. That you know that how much can you move your day from digital to analog is another great practice. Um, uh, we just, I just was with somebody that did, um, a whole month without, um, a cell phone, except for the, just the flip phone so people could find them. And the recognition of how much of our world and how we get along in the world is controlled by this thing that distances us. So it goes back to transaction relationship, but thank you. I just got a flip phone. <laughs> There you go, John, you're leading the way. Thank you. Wow. Um, but it also is empowering, you know, with my grandkids, I see they can't even do their multiplication tables because they always have something else doing it for them. And how does the not using our brains affect um, the future? So thank you, John. I'll let um, Emily call in the next group. Thanks, John. Thanks, Jody. Uh, Barbara and Carol, do either of you, either of you like to what happened in your group? Oh, Carol, I think you're muted. Neither of us have been at the previous one and we didn't know too many of the um, pivots, but I talked about the connection of my community church, which is uh, very focused on justice and peace and um. Barbara and I got to know each other and formed a connection that was was special. Mm -hmm. So that's all. Mm -hmm. Barbara, did you have anything? Nice to let me do a lot of talking and kind of getting a lot of stuff off of my chest. So I really appreciate it. And um, it would have been nice to have more time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yay, yay for relating. Well, you can talk to each other in the chat and give each other your phone numbers or emails and continue the conversation. Good idea, thanks. <laughs> uh, great, uh, Dominic, Joy, and Ronald. What, what, are you, what are you learning? What pivots did you work with? I'll, I'll volunteer if um, my new partners allow me. Uh, we, the three of us, uh, Ronald and Joy, we were also kind of new to this group. I mean, to the pivots idea. Um, so uh, Joy kindly read all of them, and we were, I think, all very impressed by the, as uh, someone said earlier, the you know the quote unquote spiritual level of these uh, pivots and. Um, one thing, Joy uh, kind of apologized for being a poet and I as an artist and a writer uh, encourage her to see her poetry as a, a means, to, you know, to talk about peace because, you know, artists have a big voice, which I think is only being discovered now. So I hope, and, and Joy did say that one of her poems, which was, I think, about peace was published recently. So we both rejoice for that. And it was a great meeting and I love Code Pink and I'm a peace activist, but uh, I'm not always able to come to your groups, but this is very, very special because I can see the reunion of activism and, and whatever you call this other side, which I call spiritual. Some people may not like that word, but it is sort of you know, the more metaphysical aspect of things. And, you know, we have separated things so much, you know, and now it's time to reunite them. And so I get very excited when I'm in a group like this, you know, I can speak, I'm an elder. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I, I get very excited and very grateful to be here tonight. Thank you. And and uh, if we could get that poem uh, maybe sent to Emily so that we could share the poem with the whole group, that would be lovely. And um, Dominique, and I forgot someone else mentioned earlier, the spiritual. 
So when I say the roots and, and when I talk about that, it takes us to ourselves. I mean, isn't that spirit? And, you know, yeah. every, yeah. why does every religion say the same thing? You know, why? Because it's truth, because in the end, it's the truth. But we've been, diver you know, diverted away from the essence and I think what you're saying, Dominique, is the essence of being, the essence of life. And if if life is, you know, a spirit and, you know, so, yes, it's all in there. And like I've said from the very beginning, we're not writing any of this. We're just trying to pull it back into a path that we can all follow out of into. But, you know, like Moji's, you know, Moji, Moji comes from Iran. It's a peace economy, like giving, sharing, all of that is just Moji's way of being because he was raised in it. It's like. Iran's not a capitalist culture. It's a peace economy, socialist culture. A lot of the Middle East is that way. So they're a lot closer. Indigenous communities don't have to think about this, um, ex you know, mostly that have been really living inside of community that's a root. And we're all trying to find our way back and together um, because we learn together and we learn in relationship. And so I'm loving the relationship buddings. And please, you know, if you want to stay together, write to each other in the chat and give each other your emails. Um, so grateful. And yes, culture is at the core of like how we create change and nourish our hearts. So thank you. Emily, back to you. Um, I know we're coming up against time, but I think we have one or two more rooms, Joshua, Macy, and Robert. 